All right, guys, uh, this is a bit different. Um, this is the first video I'll be doing on the on Warhammer on 40K. Um, this is a hobby that I've been doing for 17 years, and I'll be going into that detail on another video about my history of Warhammer hobby. Um, but today I have received, and this is why it's been a little late to start this video, I have received um, the limited edition Adeptus Astartus Space Marine Imperial Guard um, codex. You can see it's absolutely beautiful. Very thick, very um, big and impressive. Um, this cost £100 and it's no longer available. It was a limited edition. There's only, I think, uh, 200 copies of this particular version um, available. As you can see, this is Imperial Fist, which is what I intend to start eventually. I want to finish my Imperial Guard Army first, which I'll do on another video, um, but I got it when it was available. I've never done Imperial Fists. My very first army was Space Marines, and it was Ultramarines, and I had 6,000 points, but that was over 17 years ago, right? 17, 18 years ago. So this is my first attempt at doing Space Marines again since that point. So it's been a long, long, long time. But Imperial Fists are something I've always wanted to do. Now, Without further ado, this is my first impressions of this codex. I have not actually looked at this at all yet. I am opening this the first time alongside yourself. So you're seeing everything when I see it for the very first time. Consequently, I'm gonna flick through some of this a little bit quicker than I obviously would if you guys weren't around. Um, Cause I don't really wanna go into the, the point cost of all the models and stuff like that. Because I mean, just go get the book yourselves guys. It's not or download it, you know. Um, this is a rules leak, but it's just to show you how this all looks. So you get the cards in this limited edition codex of all the different Mark armor, Mark 8, which is the most modern armor, Mark 1. And actually, that is gonna be really useful for modeling. So I must admit, 18 years ago, when you had like this armor, the, uh, you know, uh, that armor, the one with the pointy helmet, you never knew what the difference was between that Mark 7. You didn't know what it was unless you were really into the hobby. So it's nice to be able to see what kind of... I mean, you've got a Thunder Warrior there, which is the very first sort of pre-Space Marine armour, which is nice. It's nice to have that as a reference. Also included are six um, uh, objective markers. Um, they look like steel, they certainly feel like metal. This is a nice little thing to have. Um, I did have the limited edition Dark Eldar Codex, but I'm selling it on eBay um, at the moment. Um, and they came with like acrylic counters, which wasn't that impressive to be honest. And here are the objective cards that come with it as well. Um, that's always nice to have. Um, because of course, Space Rings now have their own, I think it's six objectives unique to themselves. So it's, you have to have that really instead of the standard objective cards which my Imperial Guard use. So it's nice to have that whilst they're still available because I know they were limited edition when Dark Elder came out but I think now you can get them almost all the time. And here is a little booklet um, with information or pictures really of all the successor chapters that are known. Obviously you can do your own chapter but these are all the sort of chapter approved successor chapters. It's a nice little extra book to have. Nice for inspiration for colour schemes, but obviously if you bought the Imperial Guard, sorry, Imperial Guard, Imperial Fist um, Codex, you're probably going to do um, Imperial Fist, right? Um, or one of their successors. That is a beautiful codex. As I say, it's the first time I've seen it. Gold uh, leaf on the side of the uh, uh, the pages, and that is, that is just absolutely gorgeous. The camera, what I will say, will never pick up on just how gorgeous the finishes of the vinyl are on these books. A lovely artwork again. I'm just going to scroll through quickly. Oh, lovely, huge contents there. One thing I will say about Space Marines is they have a lot, a lot of love from Games Workshop. They are the fanboys, the poster boys, aren't they, of, uh, um, of Games Workshop. I'll try and hold that closer to the camera. So oh, that's an old picture. I used to love that picture when I was younger. And you've got a description of the Primarch and all the founding legions of which Imperial Fists are a founding legion. Um, I want to go through this a little bit on the quicker side just to show you. There's what we'll be doing, what I'll be doing, Imperial Fists. Um, obviously their successor chapters being Black Templars, which are sort of the more knightly order version of them, a little bit more on the sort of, well, Crusader sort of level and Crimson Fist which is exemplary of the um, sort of more stubborn version of the Imperial Fists 
Whereas the Imperial Fists are, obviously their home planet is Terra, which is Earth. Um, but they do tend to be a bit like the Black Templars, they tend to be our battle barge most of the time. Um, continued as we go through this book, I can see obviously, as I say, this is the first time I've opened this book. I love the, fr the smell, the fresh smell of a new book from Games Workshop. They all smell so good. As we're going through, I mean, we started with Ultramarines, Imperial Fists, Iron Hands, which is a great chapter, by the way. Um, we're going through each of the ones. It's basically just describing the main chapters of the uh, of the uh, Adeptus of Stratus. It then gets into the what looks like the structure of a uh, Space Marine chapter. So you've got battle companies, the first company, yeah, yeah, the reserve companies have come exit. So this is describing the overall structure of the Space Marine chapter. Um, continued here, the army and the lords of the chapter, and then you've got strike forces. So this describes here, it's not the rules, but it's a sort of fluff background of the new Gladius strike force that I've read about on forums. So that's the new formation, one of the new formations, or the see, the, the, the Decarian, sort of Necron, the, the Decarian is it called? The Decarian formation where you're allowed to take you know, you get bonuses for taking uh, your army structured in the way that they lay out. It then describes now the fluff background of the different components of the Space Marine le Legions, or well, the chapters now, aren't they? But not in the Horus Heresy. But you've got captains described here with a beautiful image here of Captain Sycarius, who's, I think, the second uh, captain, the captain of the second Space Marine Legion, I think, if I remember correctly. He's a new character. Uh, well, he's not new, but he's new to me, right? Um, I've been around in the hobby longer than, than his models and rules have, at least. Chaplains are a favourite of many a person because of their gothic look. Essentially the priests and religious leaders of the uh, chapter. Command squads, which are always uh, usually accompany a captain, but they can be taken separately now, I've been told. Um, tactical squads, my favourite. I'm an old-fashioned... Space Marine player, I believe in massed tactical squads, lots of tactical marines, because they just rock at the end of the day. Now, you know, they're more general, they're not like Eldar, for example, which are very focused, but they, they're just good at everything. They're the jack of all trades, they're not very, they're the master of none also, but you can say about pretty much about the whole Space Marine chapter. They don't excel at any one particular thing, but they tend to be good at everything. Assault squads. I know they've been changed around a little bit because some of their options, we'll look at that later. Um, assault Centurions, I hate Centurions. Uh, they just look like walking toddlers in, I don't know, cardboard armour. I love the idea, but the Assault Centurions especially, I really want to like. I want to want to like their weaponry, but I just don't like the way the models look. The Devastator Centurions are a little bit better, and I, I like them, but I just can't come to get my, you know, I can't give in and buy one. Um, Space Marine bikes. I've never been a fan of Space Marine bikes simply because um, in the old days they well they haven't changed the model since when I was around, and I resent buying a model that is you know very old. Um, but they are a lot. They are very useful on the battlefield. Land speeders, same really. I mean they've improved a little bit the model since I was around, but um, they are good models. But I think if you like skimmers, fast skimmers, go with Aldar, or Dark Aldar, or Harlequins. You know something along those lines. <laughs> Devastators, fantastic. I've always been a huge fan of Devastators and being obviously um, a pure fist, very nice to have a nice fluff background. And here on the, the artwork, you actually notice the new uh, grav weaponry um, that Devastators have access to, so that's interesting. Um, I've never used grav weapons. I've been doing Dark Eldar until recently, as I say, I'm selling them on eBay at the moment where I get Dark Eldar to fund the rest of my Imperial Guard army and hopefully enough money to start this as well eventually. There's the Stevastate Centurions, the Walking Toddler. Terminators, I was always a big fan of Terminators. They've never really performed so well on the battlefield, but I like the old-fashioned Terminators. Storm Bolters, Power Fist, I love that. I just love it. It's just so traditional. And, you know, when you play Imperial, um, Imperial Fists, they have the Bolter uh, Doctrine, right? They have the, the, the Close Range Bolter Drill, so they could be quite useful with their Storm Bolters as just a shock force to bring in. Um, and now they're cheaper. Terminators are cheaper. They're 25 points for five less. So five points models, five point a model cheaper. Um, veterans, yes, okay. Veterans, scouts. I hate the scout models. If they did new scout models with like helmets, and I've seen conversions with the scouts where you can put on um, a stormtrooper 
or you know what, what are they called now? Scut scions. If you put cyan helmets on, they look fantastic, but cyan helmets are so hard to get hold of in number. Um, on eBay, they don't sell them very well, you know. Um, they, well, they, they, they in bit stores, they're always sold out. Dreadnoughts, always a favourite of pretty much everyone out there. Transports, this is, a lot of this is new artwork. That's an old picture there of Tech Marine. This, I must admit, Games Workshop do wonderful with their artwork. Oh yes, I've seen this on the forums. This is the cutout version of the Land Raider showing some of the internals of the Land Raider. That's interesting. I will stare at that all day when I have a chance. As I said, this is just a quick glance. Oh, Legion of Damned is mentioned. That is something I thought they would get rid of. So when they have their own codex supplement. Maybe they're not in the rules, but they're just mentioned. Um, some pretty horrible drawings here, actually. I'm not quite in proportion of the um, different types of uh, units found in the Space Rings uh, chapters. But I must admit, what I do like about this is there's a lot of visual aids. When I first started, you didn't know what a lightning crawl was supposed to look like. You didn't know what a last cannon was supposed to look like. And when you first start, it's a little difficult to, to work out what weapon's which sometimes, whereas there's no mistaking with this. Um, you know exactly what a veteran should look like. You know exactly the colour schemes and how they should vary on a terminate in comparison to a power armoured model, for example. It's just nice to have these visual aids which allow you, if you're really OCD, you can really go to town with the markings, like on the shoulder pads, for example. You know the chapter badge goes on the left shoulder pad. You know that that symbol there means devastator, that sort of explosion symbol. But they never really explained that in the old days. They never really explained it too well. They did, but you had to go like rooting around for the information. And remember, this is the day when internet was very hard. To, like, you were privileged if you had internet. You were privileged if you had dial up. You know, oh, that's a beautiful battlefield. Um, photograph of Ultramarines versus a small amount of chaos here. I feel sorry for the chaos there. I feel sorry for chaos in general, I must admit. Um, they do need a little bit of love. If they could be a bit more like the Demon King, that would be interesting. Ulfray there versus uh, Ultramarines. You can see that they've gone to town again with promoting the Ultramarines. So oh, I say that, but there we go, the Imperial Fists, Black Templars. Um, but, you know, we know what Games Workshop are like. They're going to pr promote their, their most popular models. And I don't blame them. It's a business at the end of the day. Ooh, look at that in the background. You might not be able to see that. A nice image of a, an Imperial Knight hiding in the mist. I like how they get the smoke here. I don't know if that's a photographic effect or, if, you know, they actually have, like, dry ice on the battlefield. Now, now we're getting to the itty gritty. Here are some of the rules. Um, I don't want to show you them too much. I say you can. I mean, if you if you want them free, go download them on Pirate Bay, right? But you know, if not, go buy the book. Um, but they have in, included here now a, what's called the Gladius Strike Force. Now you need, and it's nice actually. They got page references. So for the Battle Company, they go to say page one seventy four. Um, page 183 for the Librarius Conclave. Ah, okay, so what this is, is basically a formation containing multiple mini formations. So they, all these will be proper formations by their own right, which should be hard to take by themselves. But if you take the minimum requirements of these formations and put them together in the way that this is, is telling you, you'll have to, you get these command benefits here in addition to obviously what each formation will gain from being taken. Um, you know, obviously we know that formations give you certain bonuses. Um, so you get like, um, you get, I think you get access to the Ultramarine uh, Combo Doctrines if you take this, I think. Um, explains here what data sheets are. Uh, which is useful to veterans and beginners alike because they are different to how obviously when I used to collect Space Marines, how they're all laid out. It's nice to have that explained. And it explains what a formation is here as well. So it's just a confirmation of the rules. Here we have our war gear, gear list, which is pretty comprehensive. It's divided into ranged weapons, melee weapons, terminator weapons, heavy weapons, special weapons, special issue real war gear. Um, dreadnought weapons, relics, standards, and vehicle equipment. So they're pretty much, it's pretty self-explanatory. And by the way, yes, they still have the burning blade and the arm indomitabus, which I like. It's nice, and the Primarch Wrath. So they've pretty much got the same relics as they used to in the older codex. 
My God, Sycarius looks like he needs a facelift there. I don't like that paint job. I must admit, heavy metal, in the flesh they look great. If you get a chance to go to Warhammer World, the models look so like a hundred times better than they look on this photographs here. Um, I don't know if it's the lighting or whatever, but they honestly are, they're beautiful up close. But on photographs, sometimes they photograph awfully. I must admit, they're horrible sometimes. Anyway, we've got Captain Psycho. So these are the data sheets now. So once you get past the war gear list, you get onto the individual data sheets. And we're starting with actually the special characters of the, so what so far is the Ultramarines. So we've got Sicarius, Tigarius, he's still in there. Cassius, who was a tyrannic war veteran, chaplain. Um, Sergeant Tellian, he was new. He came in after I stopped collecting Space Marines. But he's quite cool, actually, I must admit. Um, Cronus. Um, oh, and then finally, after the Ultramarines, we see the White Scars. Okay, so the White Scars are here. Um, Koroso Khan. He's cool. I, I am surprised they don't do him in on, on his bike. I really am surprised, because he's a great character, fluff-wise, in my opinion. One of my favourite, Vulcan. Um, I love the Forge Build Horus Heresy Primark version. Um, it's not of him, it's the Primark. Uh, what's his name again? I can't remember the name of the, the Salamander Primark. So one of you guys will tell me. Um, I don't collect Salamanders, but he... Um, I swear his name is Vulcan as well. Anyway, he's still in there, which is nice to see. And he still has a 3 plus Invulnerable and a Heavy Flamer. Oh, he's quite nice indeed. Shadow Captain strike i never used him but when i used to do my own chapter i had a cha uh, commander very similar to him but with power fists rather than lightning claws captain lysander he's basically remained the same except now his fist of dawn gives plus six strength rather than just a standard strength of 10. pedro cantor um he's the um the red fist guys the crimson fists fella i always liked him but i hated the model um he's aged badly and here we've got some of the Black Templar models. I love, I love, I love the Emperor's Champion. It's such a shame that not every chapter has access to him because he, I just, I, I mean, Roll Rise is not brilliant, but he's okay, but he's not like game winning or anything. But I just love that model. I love it so much. Uh, some more special characters. There's a lot of special characters. And then we're coming back to our standard HQ, and look, they've got up here. What, what they are by, you know, signal or whatever, by, with the emblem. Captain, librarian, as I said, I don't really want to get into the itty gritty of the, the, the rules, <laughs> done by the rule book. But this is just showing you how it's laid out, how it looks. My God, have you seen the amount of space you've given to a tech marine there? I heard, I have heard that they've, they've changed the tech marines around a little bit. I mean, for starters, he's got ballistic skill five, which is interesting. And what I like about this is I really want to take free Thunderfire Cannons, which is something they've added. They, every vehicle in the Space Marine Army can be taken in squadrons, including the Thunderfire Cannon. And um, just imagine that, 12 Blast Templates at Ballistic Skill 5, except it would be Ballistic Skill 6, because as I say, I've heard on the forums, when you take three of them, you get plus one Ballistic Skill. So that's absolutely deadly. Uh, that's a nice chaplain model. I've never seen that. I don't know. You guys can put in the comments where that chaplain model is from. I have. Is that just a standard chaplain now? That is a wonderful model. Because so I've always found the chaplains to be very clunky. Very clunky, uh, traditionally. A bit like, you know, when I used to collect Space Marines. They were horrible models. But that is, that is beautiful. Okay. Ah, and finally we get to troops. What is what that uh, sorry, I'm just lining up what that little triangle means. And we've got tactical squads, obviously. They still got chapter tactics and combat squad special rule and they saw no no fear, which is a really good rule. Very frustrating for a lot of armies to go up against that. Scout squads, yes, we, we know the, the the jaw of hell. Oh, oh, I'm not even gonna go into them. They have their use on the battlefield, but I just cannot like those models. Um Crusader Squad, um, I think, I don't know, it seems that everyone has access to that, do they? I don't know, I mean it should only be Black, no, Chapter Tactics Black Templars, so I imagine you can only take them as Black Templars, which is, you know, it's the way it should be. Um, you should, no one should have access to them apart from Black Templars. Command Squad Special Rules, Honor Guard, now this is something I'm very interested in. I want to do an honor guard, and I've bought some of the pieces for when I finally start doing this army properly. I've bought some uh, 
sheathed power swords um, in bulk from eBay, which are the Forge World Red Scorpion ones. I'll have to file off the heraldry of the Red Scorpion, but I'm going to put them on like a stone guard or something like that. So that way they'll be holding the bolter. They've got a power sword sheathed. Um, and they'll be able to act as really cool sort of converted honor guard. And the reason I want to go to with honor guard now, and the reason I've never gone for them before, is that they can get a land raider as a dedicated transport now. Uh, and that means that they free up a heavy support choice. And I want a land raider, but I also possibly want to have, oh, well, I want to have from the fire cannons and two predators, right? So honor guard for me are now a must because they allow me to have the Land Raider that I want but never could fit in before. Not without really losing out on something else. I would take the Land Raider but I wouldn't take the Thunderfire Cannons which again another unit I want. And what I like about the new setup that Games Workshop have with these books with the new rules is there is a lot more flexibility in the list. Now the thing with not having a combined arm detachment like you used to have very strict and stringent it does in some ways make the game a little less balanced People can abuse it, but at the same time, it's equal for everyone. Everyone can abuse it. And once the rule books are all updated, you will uh, find there's a lot more balance. Um, and at the end of the day, even chess isn't balanced, right? White goes first. So, you know, if you're a power gamer, just go for the. There's always going to be power gamers in the hobby. Go for the best armies because there's no, you know, you're not in there to collect the models you like, the luck of. You know, um, you're there to win. Whereas most guys will probably want to go for models they love. And I must admit, these Legion of Damned, I'm surprised they're still in the Codex. Legion of the Damned are just there. They look brilliant. I absolutely have always loved Legion of the Damned. It's nice to see them still in here. I honestly didn't think they would still be in this rule book. Terminators, I've already mentioned them, how the pricing has changed. 175 points now for five of them. Um, but the Terminate Assault Squad, the buy Thunder Hammer and Shields is five points more expensive. So if you like failed in your Thunder Hammer and Shield Terminators, you're going to be paying the same cost as before. At least you're not paying more, right? But if you go down the more traditional route, Storm Bolters and Power Fists, guess what? You're, you're actually paying less points, significantly less points as well. 25 points doesn't sound like much, but I like to fill mine as two units five. Um, so I'm saving 50 points in my army, so I can spend elsewhere. Um, Scout bikes, they look nice. I have, I have always liked scout bikes. So squad, bike squad. Oh yeah, so we're in fast attack now. Attack bike squad. Land speed of storm is still here, and you can take land speed as a squadrons as you always have been able to. Um, as I said, I'm just showing you the overall look. It's, I mean, I'm surprised I'm still flicking through the book. A huge amount of content in this book. It's so much better than a lot of the other codexes out there. Drop pod can now be taken as a fast attack, so it doesn't have to be a dedicated transport anymore. So that opens up some options for allies. Storm Talon. Right, I have a love-hate relationship with uh, Space Marine Flyers. I don't know if any of you guys are the same out there. I think Space Marine Flyers are the ugliest flyers around. I hate them in the Games Workshop range, that is. I hate them, but I love the rules. I want them to look the way I want them to look. I want them to look the way that Forge World do them. Forge World have produced lovely um, models, lovely flies. I forget the name of them now. Um, it's not Storm Raven, so that's the, uh, the other one, but whatever, they, the Fire Raptor gunship, for example. They look fantastic, and if you see them in the flesh, again, if someone has them, if you go to Warhammer World, they get one on display when I went there last. They look amazing in the flesh. Um, Storm Eagle, that was the other one, look amazing, whereas the, the the Storm Raven gunship is the ugliest flyer, it's just missing the back half, the back half needs to be extended a little bit, so shame Chapter House actually was closed down, because they actually did a conversion strip, which, made, which fixed it in my opinion, um, not that you'd be able to use them in a tournament, but anyway, enough about that, um, Devastator Squads, they've, they've, they actually now come with fire, um, the missile coming out the uh, the, uh, the missile launcher, that's interesting, and obviously now have access to Grav Talon, um, what are they called? Uh, I didn't say it's in the heavy weapons list, but essentially the new heavy craft cannon or whatever it's called. Centurion Devastators, Walking Toddlers, what I'm really interested in, Thunder Fire Cannons, yes, with Ballistic Sword 5, two wounds on the Tech Marine now as well. The, these are a superb unit in my opinion. And Predators, 
I've, I've always been a big fan of the old classics. And I know them as a Predator Annihilator and a Predator Destructor. Any of you older guys out there will know what I mean. They're the, the ways that you used to have to take them. Or they're just the names. They're essentially the same ways that you can take the Predator these days. But one is basically all as cannons. One is also cannon and heavy bolters. Um, the whirlwind. Um, always been a disappointment. 20 years ago when I started playing, as I say, it was always a disappointment then. And I, I, I think... <sighs> If you have three whirlwinds, each whirlwind missile launcher has the pinning and the shred special rules. Well, obviously pinning used to always be a rule anyway, because these are order, um, barrage weapons, aren't they? So that's no real benefit. I mean, it's better, better than it is without that, okay? But if you take them in a squadron three, they get pinning again like they always used to have, but they do get in the shred rule. That could make them useful. I'm not sure, but they're cheap, 65 points. I used to remember them at 75 points, so they're even cheaper than they were 20, 20 years ago. Vindicators, always, always loved these fellas. Um, and they can fire like a big apocalypse blast now, but the ignore. Wow. Look at this one, guys. I don't know if you can read that. But basically, if you take three Vindicators together, you get what's called the Line Breaker Bombardment. And uh, to do so, you name one, eight, one, squad, uh, one model in the squadron as the firer. And the Demolisher Cannon changes its type from Large Blast to Apocalyptic Blast, which is big. Um, I think that's, is that 7 or 10 inch blast, one of the two, right? And it gains the Ignore Cover Special Rule. So you're firing an Apocalyptic Blast at Strength 10, AP2, Ignore Cover, if you have three Vindicators. And that is only 360 points for three of them. And it only takes up one heavy support choice. Wow! That is really good. I am so tempted to have three Vindicators now. Well, wow. Hunters, I love these models. I think they are gorgeous and one of the best Space Marine releases of the, the newer range models, along with Stalkers. I think they look great. And I know they have like uh, some additional special rules and all the rest of it, like ignore cover if you take them in squadrons of three. But the only problem with taking three is that I know that they have... Sky Hunter, or whatever it's called. Um, oh, what's it called? You know, the one where you can, you know, you have to attack units in the sky. Um, if not, you're firing snapshots against units on the ground. Um, do you really want to buy three units of these when the, the enemy may not take any fires, may not take any skimmers? It's a big, big chance to take. Um, but they look great. They do look great. Ugh. Ugh. I would rather have a unit Centurions in this model, but it is such a superb model for rules. I just hate the way it looks. Oh, I just love Land Raiders. They look so beautiful. It's nice to see them in here. All three types like before. Minus Kalga, that is very strange. He's actually at the back. He's not actually with the front with the other special character. And of course, the reason why I've just noticed is he's now a Lord of War rather than a HQ choice. Um, which is nice to know because he actually has had he actually has the God of War special rule, so he should be a Lord of War, right? It's a, it's one of his special rules. Right, now we're getting to formation. So we've gone through all the unit data cards and, and you can see within the codex they go then into formations. Um, so you've got the Battle Demi Company, the Anti-Air Defender Force. So these are the formations that make the Gladius Strike Force when you take them together. Well, some of these can be used within the Gladius Strike Force. Your restrictions are as normal, printed down the bottom, and your minimum um, units that you have to take are here, and if there's any choices, they, they, they tell you what the choices are, right? Um, and then you get special rules when you take the formation. For this one, the first company task force, they gain extremist level threat and terrifying proficiency, and they gain fear and fearless also. This is, okay, that's quite nice. Okay, so the, the, you gain additional rules, but you're limiting the unit choices in your army, you have to go with what they tell you you have to have. Um, which is good and bad, you know. I love that chaplain model. Reclusium Command Squad is actually a formation now. That That is interesting. That's actually a formation now. Um, basically the chaplain's rhetoric ability, uh, war hymns or whatever it's called, it's not war hymns is it? Um, the, ch the chaplain's ability to allow you to roll hits in combat, basically. Um, he, uh, that now has a 6 inch range. If you take that, that's what you get for getting that. 
So that's interesting. You can actually take a task force of scouts. Wow, well, that's really fun. A storm ring. Very, very fun. A Centurion Siege Breaker cohort. So it looks like you've got an Ironclad Dreadnought and six Centurions. Um, that. Oh, that would be very, very fun to take. Unfortunately, I don't like the Ironclad Dreadnought model. I just don't like it, and I don't like Centurions, but I would love to play with that nonetheless, because it would sound fun. Land Raider hit Spearhead, which I've heard a lot about. The Liberius Conclave, I've heard a lot about. Basically, you can summon, you can gain warp, you know, you, you um, pass your uh, your psychic test on rolls of 2+, plus, roll and 4+, plus, so you get warp charge for every roll, or whatever, you know what I mean. Um, so, if you say you need two warp charges, and you roll four dice, you know, your chances are you're going to get four two pluses, aren't you? Um, so it makes it very hard to dispel, but you can only focus it through one librarian. I think that's what I've heard. But anyway, it's, that, there's the rules there. You can read that and you look for it. Oh, the task force. So what I'm seeing here is, that's the end of that, is a huge number of formations and then one big sort of ultra formation which combines them and it combines a few other elements. So it's nice to see a very structured format to this now because I think space Marines need that they have they are the codex you know adherence to the codex of stratus after all I'm glad that they offer these options will I be taking these options probably not I must admit I, I am very old-fashioned I will be using CADs in my force I always use combined armed detachments just old-fashioned newer players out there will not think twice about using these formations once you've gone through all the data cards and the formations, you then get to the appendix. So you'll see the new Warlord traits, um, special rules, so what combat squad look means and all the rest of it. You then get to the what I'm very interested in to read about, the chapter tactics. That's really nice to see. Um, so what I can see is you've got combat doctrines. Uh, um, I think you get that from being in the formation. Ultra means chapter tactics. So, I mean, I think you means you can use those doctrines twice, and then it gets into the individual chapters. And you'll notice also it will give a little iconography, a little bit of heraldry here, which is nice to see. That's nice to see. Um, just visually stimulating. It breaks up the page. You're just not seeing continuous prose here. Then get into the armory. So they, this is where they describe the weapons and the equipment and again some more nice imagery here very beautiful i love the way this is laid out this is going to be very fun to read i'm going to take this to nottingham with me this weekend but i'm going to nottingham for a couple of days um with my wife we're house hunting but also it's my way of going to warhammer world right so it's nice to uh um to have something to read on route and then you've got your chapter relics. So it's a completely different format or layout to some of the older codex. I've got the Imperial Guard, the Astro Malatarum Codex. It is not laid out like this. But I know this is how news codexes are being laid out, like the Necrons, the Eldar. And you've got your, your full profiles on the back, which is useful. And there's a little bit of artwork. So I imagine a lot of that is the same as what you get in a normal Space Marine Codex, or chapter, um, not what they're called, Adeptus or Stratus Codex. But it's nice to have it with a lot of beautiful Imperial Fist iconography. And that is like raised as well. That is, that's not just flat. You can feel the outline of the Space Marine a little bit with that. That's quite nice. That's beautiful. Nice shiny writing. <laughs> oh, they're still all shiny, shiny. And as I say, you get this extra. You get the, the objective tokens, successor chapter book, the uh, armor marks, which I thought was silly when I read that. I wasn't interested, but I actually haven't seen that now. Um, that's going to be really useful. Um, for designing squads to represent certain uh, uh, ways of presenting it. And it's nice to get the tactical objective cards also because in the Dark Elder one I got this, it didn't come with the cards and they were limited edition. I actually went on there literally within a half an hour of them being released and they were already sold out. I had to go on eBay to get them. Which, by the way, I'm selling mine now on eBay, so you'll be able to pick them up now if you uh, you find me on eBay. I'll put a link on here if you want. Um, but you can see just how beautiful this is. It slots in nicely, so the box should remain protected. And I just love the back of that. All right, guys. That's my first video. So that's a first impression of this codex. I might do another one where I talk more specifically about the units, their new rules, and the tactics behind them as I start to learn the overall structure of this force again. Um, I am an old Space Marine player. 
as I say, and I'm very much an Imperial player. As I say, I play Astra Militarum and have done for over 10 years now. Um, and I love the, the, the Imperium as a whole. Um, it would be nice to start a new army, but the next few videos, I will do a review a review of the rules, my, my ideas with this, but I also will be focusing a lot on the Imperial Guard as well. And I'll hopefully have a model showcase, which will show my army developing over time. But I'm a very slow painter, so I'm not going to come out too quickly. I also want to film some videos um, based on uh, rumours. So every week or every two weeks, uh, I tend to keep up with the rumours. And I will be just updating you guys on 40k and fantasy. Um, what I hear about it. Please leave comments, any ideas, anything you want to hear or see about, please ask. I'm always open. Last one guys, please like, comment, subscribe and I will see you soon.